Okay, well here we are at Pakefield. Um, the uh, church right on the coast at Pakefield. Um, and I'm going to start to paint um, this lovely uh, thatched roof church that has been here um, a long, long time, as you can imagine. And um, I'm going to uh, start to paint um, and I'm going straight in with the um, with the paint. So I'm starting off with a completely um, white paper and um, then I shall start to lay the colour on straight onto the white paper. Okay, well I've just painted the basic outline of the church. I I've put in the painting. You like that? Paint. Yeah, yeah. More loose, really. Yeah, it's the looseness, but you can still treat it fairly loose, you know. So what, what sort of cut? I mean, that's a grey. That's a that's grey. A grey church. I would say stone, it? you need to 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 actually get the grey. Don't yeah. use grey, or you, you could use grey, but you can. Um, it, it's a grey is a combination of the three primary colours. Right. So you could use raw sienna, cobalt blue, and burnt umber, light red. So you've got a red, yellow and blue. Right. And if you mix them all together, you can get the, the ageing of the stone. You can get a yellowy stone by having more yellow. A bit oh, more... Right. See what I mean? I'll try that. Yeah, you mix the whole three. Gray. Exactly. Um, and um, so I've gone in basically um, with a, a rich colour um, of, of raw sienna. Um, but I'm going to allow that to dry and then I'm going to go in and produce the uh, sky. OK, well I've damped the paper thoroughly at the top of the sky, um, down as far as the building and more or less um, either side of the church. Now I'm going to add some raw sienna with a touch of crimson just to give myself quite a nice light glow to the sky at the top right hand corner and all I've done is just stroke that in quite simply a bit more yellow in there just to give it a bit of a glow let's go in with a little bit of lemon just to um, see if we can really there we are nice big bold strokes of lemon at the top clean the brush slightly it gives a nice glow um, coming down from the right hand side and then I'm going to use crimson as my sort of shaping of clouds really um, that's more or less um, the thinking behind it all as you can hear we've got sheep in the background and I'm going to put a couple of those in later on um, now I'm going in with ultramarine so that's interesting ultramarine blue and burnt umber now that's interesting a bit of burnt sienna perhaps in there to give me light um, just want to pick up one or two cloud shapes so we're getting that nice Still leaving that bit of glow and the cloud shapes will actually um, get smaller as we go away into the distance it's a little bit there as well and 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 really the the the, the water's doing the job you know pulling the the color down really yeah. you know um, then I'm going to use ultramarine in a strong mix with a touch of crimson just to give me a nice strong blue in that top right hand corner like that another little area there and another little area there let's bring those together and this is slightly weaker at that point there we go and then another little area there this is the blue patches 
Right. See, I've got more, more kind of wash, really. That's all right. That's just I mean, got, you can still go in, John. You can I'm still go in. Kind of lost this bit here, really. I think. You, you can. I mean, it's still wet. There's no reason why you shouldn't still go in with them, um, with the stronger colour. Yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of yellow. Bit of blue. Um. You know. Trying to pick around the tower there. And some smaller cloud shapes either side there. That's good. Here we are, nice blue blue touches. And then finally I'm going in with the stronger cloud shadows, the underside of the cloud, which is ultramarine and burnt umber. And I'm going to keep burnt umber fairly dominant in the mix because I want sort of like a a bluey, um, a warm blue, so the burnt umber will dominate rather than, um, so we end up with a cloud shadow there, there you go, and another one under there, showing up the feeling of this, um, the undersides of the clouds really. Quite an unusual sort of feel, but um, I think that's um, worth the risk to try and uh, um, give this picture just a little bit more sort of depth and um, and character. I always remember it will dry considerably lighter. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I'm going to lay the board down and allow that to soak in. And um, we'll leave it there for now and um, allow that to completely dry. Okay, well, I've um, laid the sky on, laid some colour onto the building, and I've now pencilled in some of the um, basic outline drawing. Um, so I've sharpened it all up a little. Um, so my, my next job really is to give the building something to stand on um, and uh, me and John who I'm painting with today decided that um, perhaps a little bit of the distant water would be useful so I'm going to use cobalt blue because of that yeah I don't know whether we can quite see it from here but a touch of cobalt blue for the water in the distance and I think that just gives it that added little touch to create that uh, area of water in the distance. There you go. That's, that's so that's better. the water. That's yeah. So I've got to now do the grass itself. Um, and going to start off with the bushes in the distance. And I'm going to use Prussian with raw sienna. That's my mix. More Prussian than raw sienna because I want a bluer green. And I'm using a large brush for this to cover quite a large area. Um, and we've got a bush coming in here, which is um, quite, a, quite a spiky affair. Going to paint around any, um, any of the um, gravestones that we've got. A little more raw sienna to the mix now and um, that hopefully will give us a sense of um, a bit more depth to the greenery. Trying to just pick around the gravestones at that point because it shapes up the corner of the building and the gravestones themselves. So hopefully we can get, there's a small gravestone there John, <laughs> weren't meant to be, but they're small now. There we are, so that's that side. Now this side, let's add more yellow, shall we? Um, and try and just paint around there. Move some of that and put 
trying to get a bit more openness to that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So you know what I mean? I'm always sort of closed up, really. Yeah, well, you know. Um, just a little bit of openness to it would help, but it's not, you know, make or break time at this pr present moment. But um, now I'm going to do the green for the land. I'm starting off with raw sienna with a touch of cobalt but um, I want to keep this fairly sort of fluid running across the paper painting around the gravestones that's quite quite an important thing to do because I do need those to be left white paper um, to try and keep the colour there so um, I'm going to go in with a, just tidy it out with a bit more raw sienna, there you go. And plenty of raw sienna, decided to introduce a couple of figures there with a dog. Um, so, um, paint around those, um, trying to keep it nice and fluid. Sun's come out now, so um, obviously it's um, uh, vital that we um, sort of move fairly quickly to enable us to paint doesn't dry um, it's all very loose and rough um, it really is more important to create a loose feel to the um, to the painting rather than a too solid sort of designed look really um, paint around the sheep it's another important area um, I'm told that that's um, quite an important part of this uh, of this church where they graze the sheep so we need to uh, put those in if possible and that really gives the building something to sit on. Um, so in the next stage I'm going to be looking at uh, painting a bit of detail onto the building. Okay well <coughs> I'm continuing now um, producing the edging that is the um, the actual um, um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's it's really the edging of the um, um, the tower and and the uh, church itself. It's the stonework really around the edges, um, which I'm um, going to put in now. Well, I've done made a start. Um, I'll just show you for a short spell of time exactly um, how that's done. Um, uh, windows like that uh, on top of the uh, um, buttress areas one there one there it's raw sienna with a touch of um, of cobalt blue perhaps or burnt umber something like that just to knock that colour back um, and then I'm putting in the window areas and the sections inside the windows, the sill, um, those sort of, um, you know, just where the lighter stonework is. And that's the way you treat these buildings, you paint in the lighter stonework. The door surrounds, um, yeah, the door surrounds at the front, that's that one there, and the deep door reveal um, and while I have that colour I'm going to add cobalt blue with that with a little light red because I want a grey, a bluey grey for the gravestones so leaving the right hand side where the sun is catching unpainted see that, the way I'm painting those leaving the right hand side unpainted uh, because that's 
quite important. Uh, grey stone, probably. Yeah. I've made mine a little on the greyer side, so I've added. Yeah. Yeah. Any any of the buttress areas. Um, um, just the just the door surround, really. That's all I'm going to. Uh, yep. Yeah, I think that probably is sufficient. I'm just finishing off quickly those areas. We'll leave the sheep. So that's really the next. Okay, well, I've um, put in the surrounds of the windows and the side wall, um, sides of the wall. Now I'm going to add a little bit more. I've already done the gable end there, the um, tower end there. I'm now going to paint in um, the what in effect is the actual um, flint work. I'm picking around here and there, trying to suggest um, some form of um, like that. flint. That's it, yeah, that's about the grey. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for sort of greys, really as much as um, as anything, um, not necessarily um, um, a real dirty grey, but a grey that's got a little bit of colour to it, that's why I've introduced light red and raw sienna with the cobalt blue to give that uh, grey effect, and paint each individual section, in other words of the tower, um, right hand side, left hand side, leaving one or two little bits of white paper unpainted. Got to remember this is not the shadow area, this is purely the stonework itself. And also there is the right hand side of that but the left hand side of that buttress that will stand out once we get the shadow on. I've also introduced a couple of figures so I'm going to leave that very shortly. Um, put those in very shortly. A bit more raw sienna now to try and get a real bit of light onto the front of the building. Um, so that's that. There, painting around the figures because the figures are quite important in this, um, in this subject. Um, painting across and around those buttresses don't quite go up to the roof so that's that's a, that's a useful um, thing. I'm going to treat the buttresses later in a slightly different um, colour, a little bit darker, just to suggest shadow. Paint around any the um, gravestones and any of the windows that you've previously um, suggested. There's a door there, paint around that. Buttress area, work my way out to the outside edge. A small line between that and that's the window. All of these areas will be shown up when we come to add shadow. So vital that we don't add the shadow too early. And yeah, yeah, a bit more yellow then onto the front edge. And I'm making it extremely weak. That's mean, that's mean. Uh, it's, um, when you do the, the, that part of the tower, John, just add a bit more yellow to it. So that's bluer and that's got a bit more yellow oh, in it. So. And, and you see this area here, John, I'm actually going to paint that even lighter and I'm painting over those brick edgings because they are actually um, within the brickwork, you know, within the stonework. That's too much yellow, too, well too much blue probably. So all you need to do is just rinse it and um, just slightly remix. That's all you need. 
you know, it's just, just little little areas of colour that make all the difference, you know. Um, so what was it? It was raw sienna, cobalt blue, and light red. The famous sienna. Fletcher Watson mix. Okay, so that's the um, the walls, the buttress areas. Um, just got one or two other little touches. Then we're going to look at the windows. Just yeah, well, what I've actually done, I've um, um, just completed the front of the building, and uh, we're now in the process uh, of um, just painting the windows. If you notice the, the, the windows that face the light on the right hand side are of a bluey colour, um, that's Prussian blue, probably on its own. The door and the um, louvers uh, at the top um, and the rest of the windows, more or less on the shadow side, um, is actually um, burnt umber, uh, mainly burnt umber for the doors but with ultramarine to make it darker for um, the real dark windows. Uh, I've also just um, strengthened the, um, the the trees either side just to give a little bit of feeling of depth um, and um, the next stage will be really um, putting in um, sheep. Uh, I do have a couple of figures to go in um, but um, overall um, you know at the moment so far so good uh, and then when I come to the shadow um, part, um, I'm going to run the, uh, the video um, to, to show you how to put the final touches on. Okay, right. well okay. I've put in the, um, uh, the sheep, quite simply, yeah. raw sienna, yeah. burnt umber, and the heads and the legs are um, burnt umber ultramarine. Popped in a couple of little figures, but the main event of this is the shadows. Right, to get that shadow work, I'm going to use ultramarine. So I'm mixing up a good mix of ultramarine, and remember, these are large areas because it's quite a large sheet of paper. Oh, I'm going to use um, crimson or lizard because I'm looking for a purpley colour. Right, so it's a red and a blue. But to knock that back, it's quite purple, which is quite good. To knock that back, I'm going to use raw sienna. And that mellows that shadow. There you go. And a little bit more blue, a little bit more raw sienna. That just gives that shadow a bit of... Takes away the... Um, and, and the thing is, when you start these shadows, do the areas that really don't matter quite so much. That's the areas that, a bit more yellow with that, they are the areas that you need to do first because you can almost get away with any sort of shadow there. And leave a small bead because the sun is coming from the right, so that's casting a shadow onto this build and that shapes up that corner. Over the windows, they almost disappear but they will shine through again shortly and um, there is overhanging shadow from the greenery above there which comes down the front of the just helps to hold that in and also there is a shadow cast from the wall but there is also a area there so that's nice and dark nice bit of depth now I'm going to add more raw sienna to that to give it a bit of warmth because that's a distant shadow. Now I'm going to add burnt sienna and raw sienna to give the shadow even a more mellow touch. And this won't be quite as heavy and we're going to catch light onto the area at the front of those castellations. So you can see light hitting the front. I'm going to leave a bead on top and then that stands out and comes back. Alright, so this is all in shadow. That's, that mullen is in shadow. 
So I may decide to only shadow that right hand side of that. Maybe that it's not in complete shadow. See what I'm saying? Maybe it just has a little bit of light catching that architecture. A little bit sticks out there again, a little bit wider. A little bit of light there. And uh, well, that must finish quite straight. Because that's a dead corner, that is. Okay, there we go. And slowly we we'll work our way down. And because we're using ultramarine, we mustn't paint back. We do need to be very careful we don't lift off the underpainting, which is so easy to do at this stage. Windows are left unpainted on right the way across. And there's a lovely shadow that extends there. Yeah. Good, good, good. So that's the shadow area to that. Next. I'm going to then paint, oh, there will be shadow on that section there and that section there. Uh, there will be some shadow under there, like that. And there's also a gargoyle of some sort there, but we're not certain how that looks, but we'll um, suggest it. Now, the underside of this and inside that window, can you paint on that? And all of a sudden that gives it depth. Um, then there is a shadow here from the overhang of the roof. That could be gently cast on here, but at this stage I'm going to just assume that the light is only just coming around. Paint around any figures, leave those in sunlight at this stage. Now, more burnt sienna going in to make a rich, warm shadow, um, which will be under there, the overhang of that, and the overhang of that there, and the continuation of that there, right the way through, up to there. Right, there we go. Now that's a nice warm shadow. Then I'm going to have a shadow inside that window, dropped into that window, inside there, uh, think there, there we are. inside that window and down to there. Uh, is this one arched now? That one's straight again, across, down, arched and down. And all of a sudden, the whole thing begins to take on a different sort of shape. Just lift that back, going down a little far with that. Ease that back down. There we go. That's it. That's, that's pretty much that. And then I'm going to shadow this area here, leaving perhaps that window a little bit less tense. There we go. Coming along. Now I'm adding more blue now, just to ring the changes and to give us a little bit more of a purpley colour. Um, I always like to, to change your colours a little as I paint, so that you don't always have the same colour in all of your shadows. It adds, adds, adds a, another dimension to the whole thing. So that's down there, these are the buttress areas. Yep. That um, quite important on churches. Uh, very much a, a feature of um, church architecture. Quite often we have a bit of an overhang there, there, and there. Um, okay. Oh, just the inside of that little area there. There's a door here. Didn't put the door. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. That's um, pretty much there. And then, of course, we have the overhang of this, which is running like that, and down onto the roof line. Then we have the the ridging for the thatch 
which will have a shadow to give it sunlight and I'm going to paint all of these well, some of them anyway in shadow and the benefit of that will show up once I put any shadow onto that. Now I'm going to use brown now so burnt umber for what the rest there's a bit of an angle there notice how I'm changing from a cool to a warm colour so that one's straight finishing around there this one's a little darker that one is very close to that one that one there and there they show up because of the sunlit edge okay. Okay. that is beginning to come along and then finally another one there made that more blue so it stands out bit of shadow for the figures because they will be in shadow shadow there shadow under the sheep very important for them to sit onto the ground there you go lovely sunlit and then finally before we finish I'm going to use a little bit of license now and put in a nice dark green and it needs to be quite blue green not too rich because the whole picture is not over rich in colour uh, we've got a monument to do I'm going to damp the paper trying to create a bit of atmosphere now within the picture and paint across with this dark green um, a little bit more blue a little bit of brown in there just to give it a bit more sort of richness to it there we go lovely deep sort of cloud shadow which um, is always a useful thing to do and I'm going to put that sheep in part shadow and it's always a good thing to do because it shows them up particularly well and that shadow is going to run off out into the distance like that that's going to come down across that area there and completely close that outside up and then we're going to just streak in we don't want that to rise we want that to be quite streaky and, and light and then this one is going to be in half shadow so get rid of all the white around him and that will get, then just sweep away up that, across that that's going to have shadow 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 put these up in a, good, in a sort of a blurry shadow oh that'd be nice so let's blend it in mm. and we create a cross effect there by um, using that there we go and really spreading that through and it's a matter of getting mood into the picture really mm. you know um, that to me is basically what it's all about is just trying to get a bit of mood there just just before I bring me I'm going to really add something a bit deep to that bottom right hand corner just before it dries go that'll, that'll spread in yeah that's looking quite mm. good that's pretty much there John honestly I think um, spread that the other side just keep introducing that spread that through and I think overall don't want any sunlight on the back of the figures that would all be in shadow that will be a small little gravestone of some sort that will then have a shadow to it um, and there will be along the edge here a little bit of edging to the path that will just gradually blend into that soft area um, and just want 
to introduce a little light, a little bit of sunlight onto those buttress areas so they really begin to shine. But I don't want to lose those. And uh, I think that's pretty much there, really. Mm. One or two little touches, birds in the sky, possibly. Um, there is some edging that I will do very shortly, but that's basically mm. the shadows. Mm. Just a little bit more sharpening. Right. But other than that, that's the. Sh um, we're going to uh, just going to show you the finished painting, um, and that's it there. Just pulled everything together using um, a, a brush um, that points well. Let me just come around a little bit because the sun's on that. Um, as you can see, the figures have been pointed up. Um, put some birds in the sky, which is always a good thing to do. Um, yeah, well, there you go, John. Not a bad thing to do. The tower has been sharpened up with some um, nice little um, um, brush strokes with a rigger. Um, the sheep have been tidied up. It's always a good thing to do. And with a big um, picture like this, you do need to stand away and, and look at the subject you've just painted um, and uh, just check you've got everything right. Um, I've got my painting friend with me and he's produced his version, which I'm sure can be very, very happy with. Um, and overall, it's been a really successful day. And I um, hope you, you've enjoyed that uh, uh, look at painting Takefield Church. And I will be posting more videos very shortly.